What is my why? My why comes out of, I've been uh, always around sports, I've been a coach for quite a while, and um, I will explain the story of one of my lifters as to why I do what I do. I have a, an Olympic weightlifter named Ali Ludwig. She was a super heavyweight and a very, very strong girl. She's on her way to the Olympics, maybe not 2020, but uh, the one after that, she has a really good, good chance at, at making it. Right now, she snatches, I think, 97 kilos, right? She weighs about 89 kilos herself, so if there's a 90 kilo weight class in the Olympics, you'll see her coming up. And she came to me, it was last March, I remember, it was two months before Nationals, and when she snatched the 95 kilos at national, she had no feelings in her left hand, which means she could not feel the bar in her left hand. She still snatched 95 kilos, which is terribly strong. She has quite twice as big as I But um, she's what we call it a of brick house. Excessively strong athlete, excessively talented, half German, half Korean. I don't know where they met, but that makes for a really, really cool mix. As you tell, she's very, very impressive. But the neck gets so tight, so bad over time, that here comes the loss of uh, basically feeling in the fingers, then basically all the way up to here. She had no sensation in the entire left arm. Start to have elbow pain, so that's about the only sensation she has in her left arm is elbow pain. So she comes to me and she said, I'm going to compete at Nationals in two months. I was like, no, you're not. Uh, she could not put a bar, an empty bar over her head without pain. I was like, maybe it's a sign that you should not compete in me. That was a long conversation, by the way, because uh, her coaches believe, like too many of them, do that either you break and then you go get surgery or the PT or your training. There is nothing in between. I disagree. So she came to train with me. And so first eight weeks she was not allowed to do Olympic weightlifting. No, zero. No lift, no lifting. That did not go well with her coaches. Because obviously if she doesn't do any weightlifting for eight weeks, she lose her squat, she lose her snatch, she lose her clean and jerk, she lose everything, right? But obviously. So we start training about twice a week, and then we move to three, but that's it. She did all my stuff, which is the thing you've seen on Instagram, which is a rope pull, overhead yoke carry. There was a lot of drives. Then I started to, uh, to make her do yoke carries, for the reason I will explain it. And so about eight weeks worth of that, eight, nine weeks, everything starts to go better. She goes back to her Olympic weightlifting, she does the snatch, just 40 kilos, nothing hurts. We're like, yeah, cool. Second session is in, they decide to max out to see where she's at. Not necessarily what I wanted at the time, but that's okay. She got to 87 kilos, uh, full snatch, stopped, because honestly they were like, that's surprising you can go. She could have done heavier, but they were so surprised she could do it that much, that just let it go. No pain, no pain in the neck, no pain in the hand, no way. That's it. She did basically did not lose any strength. She lost about, I don't know, like 10 kilos on the bike squat, I think that's about it. Everything else was, uh, the Olympic weightlifting stayed up and everything, so she was very happy. Goes back to training, now she can handle the training. There is no more loss of feeling in her hands, no more loss of feeling in the, in the neck. She comes to see me once a week, just so we can make certain things keep on functioning. But now she's fear of bike squat with 180 kilos yesterday. Yeah. She's a brick house. But, uh, so obviously everybody's happy, she's training, the coaches believe in my system, okay. So all that is great, but every time I look at her, I'm like, okay, so when she came to see me, she was 10 weeks away from going back to training, everything is great, on her way back to the Netflix and everything. She was also 10 weeks away of not coming to see me, and then what would have, have happened? She goes to the uh, nationals, she snatches too heavy, it was a good chance she would mess up her neck. Right. She can mess up on like soba, her shoulder, something, and she never lifts it. Right. So literally, you have the athletes, she goes to the left, everything is fine. Back there, she goes to the right, and she's basically done lifting forever. So I have her. How many athletes did I not help? Right? How many thousands are not going to come to see me and are going to go to the right? And 10 weeks from now, we'll go clunk, something will bulge in the neck, and they're done with Olympic weightlifting at a high level. Basically, their career is done. That's why I do strong fit. Because it's just not, the structure the way we have right now in the fitness industry is just not good enough. That's just the bottom line is I refuse to have athletes that spend an entire life to our one goal, which is the Olympics. That's who they are really, they're lifters. You all know, you all train really hard, right? Imagine if someone were to come tomorrow and say, you're done training. You're going to get fat, lazy, like choose another profession. 
personally, I would not like it. And that, that really translates to the, the fitness industry. When you look at the continued education, right? I have the, uh, which, which one do I have? ISSA, I think, was the strength and conditioning uh, certification that I did. And so that's level one. And you go to, you further down that road, right? So they take the good trainers, and the continued education is designed to make you basically train for athletes, right? Or better athletes and everything. So that's continued education. You go towards your PhD, it's toward programming, toward applying all that stuff to better and better athletes until you basically make it to a pro team. So again, we're saying that the, your normal people at the gym don't deserve better coaches. That's a messed up system. How many of you guys own gyms? Okay. How many pro athletes do you have? Yeah. How many <laughs> top level athletes are going to go to the games do you have? Okay. How many of the athletes you, are you going to have that go to regionals? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking what? Over 90% of basically common people, right? They need... What do they need, by the way? Do you think those, those people that you have that, that is basically, you know, 95% of people, do they need better programming? Is that the first thing they need? Not really. Do they need to move better? Yeah, right. So that's the thing. If you look at continued education, usually it's to make you better at programming. Programming is not coaching. Programming is easy stuff, honestly. That's something you learn real quick. It's just plain easy. That's not what real coaching is. Real coaching is getting people to move better and stuff like that. So for example, I'm using uh, the example of Ali, who's a great athlete. But let's, let's uh, I'm going to tell you this in another story, a friend of mine. She was someone with tremendous strength, narrow hips, and a very, very strong mid-back. So instead of all the tension going here like Ali had, she put all her tension in her lower back. And so, fast forward five years, she has seven, seven millimeter bulge on the L5, three millimeter bulge on the L4, no, seven millimeter this way bulge on the L4, and three millimeters on the SI joint. So, ouch. Um, you're talking about someone who cannot squat anymore, who cannot lift anything past 45, 65 pounds. So, you know, 40 kilos maybe. Yeah. And so for five years, she had to stop training. She could do body weight movement, but that was about, we're about six months in. And she's able to squat, uh, where she squat? I think she squat at 115, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. She can actually snatch. Basically, she's back to training. So, will she ever compete again in CrossFit? No. Because the injury is just far too severe. But can I reduce the amount of bulging in the disc just by getting, making sure the musculature doesn't keep pulling? Yes. That I can do. And, can I, and she went back to full training. There are certain things where obviously she has to be careful of because unfortunately the injury is too advanced. But she, kept, she went back to super active, training hard. Basically. And when I got her, there was that look in her eyes. I don't, I don't know if you guys have, have had people that come to your gym that are really messed up. Pain after a while messes with someone's mind. Like, I don't know if you had, like, or even you see that with veterans and everything. Uh, you can have PTSD from an injury that lasts long enough. PTSD is like, you know, like a high stress level that start to mess uh, with people's psyche. They, they, she had that look in her eyes like someone was really desperate because she cannot do anything and there was no telling when the back was going to go out. Five months later, she's back to training. Uh, I remember her first really hard training, she came back and she had a look in her eyes, she was happy. She was never going to compete in CrossFit, it didn't matter, she trained hard enough that she was happy. You could tell her soul was a lot better suddenly. And that's the why I do it. So my point is not to go train a pro team. I had pro athletes coming to me and everything, but I train people that are messed up. Not because they're pros. To me, continued education is not going to be going to world uh, training the guys at Manchester United or anything like that. I want to make uh, better trainers for common people. I think that's the, the biggest problem that I see in the fitness industry, and that's why I'm trying to change it, basically. So that's, my, that's the why of strong fit, really.